What a tremendously impressive opening ceremony that was. The eye of the Tiger plays them down to the opening faceoff. And Krutov dumps it in behind the Philadelphia Flyers net. This is the final game of six between the Soviets and the National Hockey League. And Bobby Clark makes the pass in center ice for Markow. Clark just named team captain before the game in the starting lineup for the Philadelphia Flyers. Krutov was checked by Mark Howe. Round the boards it comes for Lindsey Carson. Left back there for Cochran. Now Howe again. Larry Anoff at center ice for the Soviet Union. Soviets hit hard of the blue line. Timonev set flying by Cochran. Flyers changing. Brian Prop comes on and takes the puck. He dumps it down to the Soviet corner. Shepelev, rink wide, left side. Shot in by Fetisov, the Soviet team captain. And their outstanding defense player. Now this is Prop. Flyers being stymied at center ice by the Soviets. Soviets coming back in with Larry Anoff. Wide angle shot blocked by Lindbergh, who holds on for a faceoff. A minute and 20 seconds. In the period one of the Soviets and the Philadelphia Flyers. Well, we look at one of the keys of this Philadelphia team, Daryl Sittler coming over from Toronto, also supplying a great deal of leadership to this hockey club. Bobby Clark, of course, the acknowledged leader, one of the greatest in any sport. And Bobby Clark, by the way, having his finest season as he's had in four or five, a definite Hall of Famer. And here's another candidate right there in a Daryl Sittler. He's having a fine season, too. He scored 23 goals, 19 assists for these Philadelphia Flyers who lead their division. The Islanders are third. As we said at the outset, it couldn't have come at a better time for the Flyers. They're a hot hockey team. Semenov played it inside the Philadelphia line. Now some heavy bumping from the Flyers in the corner. Sittler throwing a check there. For Vukin. Skated off by Paul Holmgren. Anatoly Semenov with it now. A check of Svetlov at the Philadelphia Flyers blue line. They'll jam it for a face-off over on the far board. And the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. The Soviet bench, I think, a little overwhelmed by the impressiveness, as we all were, of the opening ceremonies here. And thousands of people waving American flags. And if the Flyers score, they'll be waving them all the harder. Right now, Miroslav Dvorak behind the goal brings it across his own blue line. Zubkov taking over for the Soviet Union. And Vladimir Zubkov lobs it down inside the Philadelphia zone. Left in there. Here's Tykov closing in. Hit the side of the net. Soviets have not had a real good scoring chance yet. Almost one for the Flyers there, but a good check by Zubkov. Knocks the Flyer winger off balance, and back come the Soviets. Baikov brings it in, feeds the pass across. Darakov's shot blocked, rebound. Down goes Lindbergh to hang on for the save. A couple of good opportunities there for the Soviets. The first shot blocked by Dvorak. Dvorak, by the way, has more experience than anybody else in the Flyers against the Soviets, playing over 200 games with the Czech national team. Now coming to play this year in Philadelphia and doing very well. Kelly Lindbergh, also from Sweden. Sinisella from Finland. A great deal of international experience in this Flyer Hockey Club. And the first shot there, blocked by DeVore. And a follow-up shot saved by Lindbergh, and he freezes it. Glenn Cochran for the Flyers. Stationed behind his own goal. Starts to play off the right side. Now long lead pass for Bill Barber. His first game since December the 4th. They'll use him sparingly, but Barber's back in good shape. Tom Gorenz with the puck as it is carried in by the Soviets offside. The referee, by the way, is Bruce Hood. Linesman Ron Finn and Leon Stickle. And the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Off, the Soviets promptly iced the puck, so the faceoff will come to the left of Trechak. In the opening, we were 
Shona Czech and Van Emp on Harmeloff. And after, we'd like to tell you a little story about Harmeloff that the fellas pay tribute to after the Canada Cup. All right, here's Barber feeding Howe. The quick shot is blocked by Trechak. Soviets clearing it out to center ice. Mark Howe, a tower of strength in recent weeks for Philadelphia. Back there on defense, along with number 29, Cochran. Cochran slaps it up the boards past Barber, goes the length of the ice, being chased down there by the Soviets' Kazatana. Alexei Kazatana trying to send Kutov away on the right side. That is intercepted. Flyers with it now in the center ice area. Long shot drifts wide. Here's the rebound, slapped wide by Lindsey Carson. Bobby Clark couldn't contain it, gets it back to Carson. Carson back around the boards, rolls all the way out to the point. Nobody there, and Krutov clears the Soviets right on Lindbergh. Carson swings away in his own zone for Bobby Clark. Clark right side pass, coming back for Carson. Whistle down on the offside. The game, four minutes and 15 seconds old. Well, temper's flaring just a little because of the check after the whistle as we see Fedosov. The leader on that Soviet defense just going off. Last year, after the Canada Cup series was over and the Soviets won, they went back to the hotel room. And Phil Shoyer, part of the NHL, was with them. He was the fellow traveling with the delegation. And he said Vasilyev got the whole team in the room and they paid a tribute to Harmelov. First, a good husband, a good sportsman, a good father, and a good hockey player. He says it, it was just like an emotional feeling for all those players missing him. He got killed, as you know, just previous to the last Canada Cup. One of the most exciting hockey players any of us ever saw, Valerie Harlamov, killed in an auto accident. Part of the big story here, seven years ago, hard to believe it was that far back, when the Flyers, with their goons, went after the Soviets, he left the ice. And a much different story here as Shepilev has it inside his own blue line. Rolled in by Stutla, promptly back out to the center ice area for the Philadelphia Flyers. Carson left wing, shot goes by. Stutla brings it out for the Soviets, can't connect with Seminole. Pervuka now lobbing it down the board. Stopped by the goaltender, Lindbergh. Wilson pass the right side. A long shot by Allison going way off the mark. A little over five and it's gone. No score. The Flyers and the Soviets in the wrap-up game of this exciting series. Inside the blue line, Darrow Sutler shot block. A second chance he almost got. Now Bruce Hood will call an interference penalty, likely against the Soviet Union. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. We're looking at Vasily Pervukin, who just got called for interference after Daryl Sittler taking that first shot. See Pervukin in front of the net, taking the flyer down. So the Philadelphia Flyers on the power play with this man, Pervukin, sitting out an interference penalty in front of the net as Sittler was getting an attempt to score a goal. Flyers on the first power play of the evening. Bobby Clark on the faceoff for Philadelphia. Calgary Flames use power plays to score all their goals in a 3-2 win last Sunday night. Miroslav Dvorak in behind the Philadelphia goal forming the play up with Howe. Mark Howe now skates to center right. Dumps it over to Clark on the right side. Stopping in the corner, right out in front for Howe. In front for Sittler, he could not get the puck, but a great scoring chance there for Philadelphia. Just missed. One pass too many as Howe chose to pass rather than shoot the puck. Dvorak inside the blue line. Sittler's trapped on the offside. The faceoff will come there, as we'll remind you, that CTV's wide world of sports, there's Bobby Clark, We'll be on a little earlier this Saturday in most areas due to the starting time of the NFL playoff game. So check local listings for the telecast time in your area. Well, the Soviets, as you said, have been scored on six times on the power play out of ten chance goals that the NHL got. Six have been on the power play, and this Philadelphia team just had an excellent chance. With Clark and Howe and Sittler down in front, they really spread the people out. They leave two people all the way up at the blue line. 
to make sure the Soviets can't put too much pressure on them. They bring that puck up ice, especially with Mark Howe, who's got great speed and good puck handling ability. Soviets, conversely, only five for 28 opportunities in this series. But having no trouble here, taking it back down to the Philadelphia zone. Lariana closing in, went a bit too far, being hounded in there, and Mark Howe comes up with it. Lariana gets tangled up in front of the net. Play down to the Soviet blue line now. Howe drags it in. Leaves it there for Daryl Sittler. His pass down to the corner picked off by Fedosov. Larianov at center right. 49 seconds remaining in for Bukin's interference penalty. A funny bounce, but handled well by Lindbergh. Miroslav Dvorak for the Flyers. Relay down to the Soviet corner. Going after it there was Brian Trott. Shuttled across the ice. Back for number 24, Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer down to the corner. Kazatanov getting there first. Now this is Mark Taylor. For Prop in behind. Prop trying to feed the puck out in front. Intercepting is Kazatanov. He fails to clear. From the point, the quick shot. Rebound. Just sailed over the glass. A fast shot by McCrimmon. Almost put the Flyers on top. Well, the slap shot by McCrimmon and the rebound to Brian Prop, probably the quickest wrist on this Soviet, on this uh, Philadelphia hockey team. As you look at Kazatonov, a little frustrated because he couldn't get to Prop quick enough, and Prop got a good shot away, put it up over the glass after it was deflected. Brian Prop has seen this man Trechak before. He played against him in the World Tournament last year in Helsinki. Prop, one of the better players on Canada's World Team last year. And we'll be seeing more of Mr. Trechak in the intermission today. We've got a feature on the outstanding Soviet goaltender. Flyers still with nine seconds in the power play for Vukin. About to come out of the box. Here's the shot. Block drifts to a maze of players. Prop in behind, beating it there. Dug out. Now for Vukin is on the ice. They're back at full strength. Zubkov. Playing it off the left boards. The relay down the ice into the center ice area. Now this is Mark Taylor. Drops it there in a hard blast by Prop. Was handled by Trechak. Taylor chasing it. Starikov coming up with it. Now Gorenz moves in after the puck. But Bykoff of the Soviet Union fails to clear. Bill Barber almost had a chance. Barber left it there. Doja Venikov starts a Soviet play away on the left side. The shot drifts around the glass wide of the goal. Up the boards, kept into the Soviet. Now cleared for Barber in the center ice area. Dumps it over on the right side for Gorin. They play it in behind. Gorin or Lydia Letovov running into Barber there. Play going right on. Near the 12-minute mark of this period. A long shot to Lindbergh. Soviets changing on the goal. Mark Howe moves up the ice. Three Soviets converge on him. Howe leaving it in behind the net. Koja on the right boards for the Soviets. Clearing the puck into center ice. Soviet shooting it in. Sinisello can't keep it. Provukin getting it up for Shepelev. Now for Seminole, inside the blue line. Off the side of the Philadelphia net. Trying to jam it for a face off. Sheffield comes out right in front of the goal. Got a shot as he sailed out in front of the goal. Now for the Flyers, here's Sinisalo. He's got panic with him. Sinisalo skates to the corner with a Soviet defender falling there. Mark Taylor in the corner against Vidya Lettenau. Left there, the shot drifts wide from Sinisalo. Sinisalo with Panic. Panic goes down and a check in the Soviet corner. And the Soviets clear it back inside the Philadelphia Flyers blue line. They will change once again. Soviets changing frequently. Bouncing shot to Trenchak from the stick of Dvorak. Non stop action here at the midway mark of period one. Ben Wilson for Philadelphia in the corner. Gets some help in there now. Wilson still battling. Getting it back to Bobby Clark. He's gone back to replace him on defense inside the blue line. Now for Wilson. Hits the Soviet line. Drops it inside. Couldn't make the pass quick. Forced back down the ice by Slutkov. Left there. 
center ice for Carson. Carson pumped hard by Bozakar. Very physical right now. Past the midway mark of the period. 9.28 to play. A scoreless hockey game. The crowd roaring here in the Philadelphia spectrum. The Soviets finally will ice the puck. A stoppage in play with 9.19 to go. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Bozhikov really took Lindsey Carson into the boards, and he got Carson a little excited after Carson had the opportunity to hit him behind the net, which he did. The icing came. Carson went back to the Soviet bench and started talking to Bozhikov. A lot of emotion, a great deal of speed, a lot of good action out there tonight. Both teams extremely keyed up. Philadelphia with some excellent shooters if they get shot. Watch for number two, Howe, number seven, Barber to really fire that puck. Those two along with Brian Prop, we see the little skirmish there between Carson Bozhikov and Brian Prop, three of the best wrist shots in the league. Well, it's an established fact by now. The Soviets don't sit back and take the rough stuff. They can retaliate with the best of them. Flyers with a chance here, a shot rusted wide. Soviets bring it out promptly. Kazatanov, Delarianov inside the blue line. Kazatanov keeps the puck inside the Philadelphia zone. But now here comes Daryl Sittler at center ice with Prop rolling it down off Trechak's stick. Prop stopping in the corner against Timonev. It rolls to Vyacheslav Fetisov. The Bobby Orr, they call him, of Soviet hockey. Eight minutes, 42 seconds to play in the first period. They're scoreless here at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Timonev inside the blue line. Having trouble, Zittler jams it out to center ice for Prop. Comes across to McCrimmon. McCrimmon against Kutov. Had to leave it there. Here comes Fetisov, the backhand shot. A good save by Linder. And McCrimmon bats it back down the ice for the Philadelphia Flyers. Has a ton off. Rolls it down beside the Philadelphia net. Shot ahead by Hoffmeyer. Now this is Evans. Beating Barber. Barber shooting. Rebound off the fine stop by Trechak. But the Soviets come away with it. Baikov inside the blue line. It rolled off his stick. Held in by Starikov. Mark Howe for Philadelphia. Bumped by Baikov. It comes around to the other side. Cochran trying to clear. Soviets holding it in. Now Cochran comes away with it in a log jam at center ice. Shot the puck ahead for Starikov for the Soviet Union. Kozhevenikov. Vasiliev body there in the corner. His first shift tonight. Now Kozhevenikov drifts it in front for Vasiliev. Intercepted but held in by Baikov. Two on one. Here's the pass directly in front. Vasiliev scores for the Soviet Union who take a 1-0 lead with 7-11 to play in the first period. Well, a great play by Bykov getting that puck on the far side and threading the pass across to Vasiliev. You'll see Bykov right there steal the puck, go to the far side, and Vasiliev being on the left-hand side, he could reach back and get that puck and score. It's a fortunate thing he was a left-hand shot. The pass a little behind him, but he gets enough on it to beat Lindbergh and put the Russians up by one. They have a lot of left-hand shots, Lou, on the Soviet team. It works for them frequently in that situation. Soviet goal scored by number six, Mikhail Vasiliev. Assist number 27, Vladislav Baikov. The time, 12 minutes, 49 seconds. 12, 49, Vasiliev from Baikov. one nothing for the Soviet Union. Philadelphia, a little disorganized now in the Soviet zone. Less than seven minutes to play in period number one. And the Soviets have scored first. They've been awfully tough throughout this series whenever that has happened. The National Hockey League has won two of their three games with a one-goal lead. That is, they had a one-goal lead early in the three games, won two of them. Off the glass, in behind Lindbergh, in net for Philadelphia. Wilson with Taylor. A long shot by Wilson. Surprise Trechak from that distance. But who can have to leave it there for Taylor of Philadelphia? Taylor makes his pass back in the corner again. Paddock having difficulty. 
Obiad trying to break the place. Hannah makes the check. Keeps it back inside the line. The Bill Yelitsada. Both teams changing now. The Bobby Clark line coming out for the flyer. Five minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first period. Lutkoff inside the line. The wide angle shot handled by Lindbergh. One nothing Soviet. And the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Mikhail Vasiliev on the assist from Sergei Babinov at 12.49. That's the Soviet lead of one to nothing with 5.46 to go in the first period. Bobby Clark against Lukov on the faceoff to the right of the Philadelphia goal. Flyers winning it left there in the corner for Bob Hoffmeyer. Up the boards for Carson. Clark getting it out ahead at center right. Ray Allison. Hoffmeyer slides it inside the blue line on contact. Here's the shot. High off the glass by Bobby Clark. Carson leaves it there. Allison for Clark. Couldn't find him. Now it is Alexander Sportsov. Barnikov on the pass offside inside the Flyers' blue line. The Soviets changing their style a little as we look at Ray Allison, who came over here from the Hartford Whalers, playing on the right wing with Clark. The Soviets have allowed one of their people to float up high around the red line or blue line, trying to hold that Philadelphia defense back and get out a little easier from their own zone. And defensively, when they're in their zone, they're getting four men deep to take away the slot area from the Flyers right now. We approach the 15-minute mark of the period. Trapp having difficulty at center ice against Timonev. Timonev sending Kutov inside the line. Taken down by Howe. Howe falling on the play. Comes in front of the goal. Here's a shot. Kutov scores. A wide-open chance on the rebound. And the Soviets lead 2-0. Well, you won't believe that one. After Kutov went in the corner to get the puck, he was taken in with a... Look at him. He's a little dazed. He's taken in with a real heavy check by Holmgren. And it was so hard that it kept him there for a while. He's stunned, so by the time he reacts, the shot comes wide. He's just coming out of the corner, and the puck comes right to him. He's got a little time, and he puts it up and over Lindbergh. He comes out saying what, what day it is, and they say, good morning. Here's the puck. Have Soviet a look at this chance. Boom. 2-0 Soviet. Assistant number two, Vashislav Finisov. Pollock number 28, Victor Tumiev. Finisov and Timonev get the assist of the Time second Soviet goal, the gift goal scored by Kukov. In they come again. Wave after wave of Soviet players coming in as Bykov works against Howe in the Philadelphia corner. The Soviets on top by two goals to nothing. Koja Venikov, hard blast, stopped by the goalie Lindbergh. And finally for the Flyers, back they come to the center ice area with Holmgren having difficulty. Takes it inside the line. Stick check smartly. And the Soviets, Koja Venikov, back hands it out to center ice. A little over four minutes to go in the first period. Bykov, circling at center. Now dumps it across the flyer blue line. Up the boards for Bill Barber. The relay by Barber out to center ice. It is Vladimir Zupkov. Starikov, long lead pass intercepted by Ben Wilson. Wilson plus one, and Petchek turns that to the corner. Gorant feeding it back into his zone. Now Barber feeding Gorant from the right wing over the blue line of the Soviet Union. Forced back into the corner by Zubka. Can't make a play. Barber coming to help out as they jam it up for a faceoff in the Soviet zone. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. There it is, with 3.35 to go in the first period. All Soviet Union so far with a two-goal lead. Vasiliev and Krutov, the marksman for the USSR. Faceoff coming back. Unable to get a shot away. Barber looked for the puck. Now it is Miroslav Dvorak being forced back to his own line by Svetlov. Almost coughed it up there. Soviets. Very dominant here in the first period. 
Petloff is offside of the blue line on the delayed call. It goes right on now as Barber feeds it across the center red line. But the Flyers having trouble getting organized attacks once they go on offense. They're forcing to play a little, Don, getting too far ahead of the person with the puck, and they're stopped at the blue line. Soviets have headed them off well right there at the Soviet blue line time and time again. Bill Yeletinov trying to feed Sheffield. Now we'll dump it down to the blue line. Ben Wilson is the Flyers and Soviet teams on the fly. 2.40 to play in the period. Here's Wilson. Roll off his stick too far ahead. A goal here late in this period would be of major significance in this hockey game for the Philadelphia Flyers if they can get one. Shot down by Sinisalo. Clear to the line. Kept in there by Hotfire. In behind. Had it right out in front of the goal. Did not get the shot away. And number 22 for the Soviets comes away. Luke Kahn. With Schwarzkopf in the corner trying to find the puck. Kozakov. His shot blocked by the Flyer defense. The Flyers not able to break as quickly as they would like. The Soviets completing and covering exceedingly well. And then it's 48 to play in the period. Hotfire drifting a shot down the side. Trechak. Almost left inside the zone for the Soviets, but popped out the center right. Now it is Sergei Babinov against two Philadelphia Flyers watching him. Soviets again, changing very rapidly. Their big line of Lariana, Timonev, and Krutov is on the ice. Bobby Clark inside the line, a lazy shot, drifts off the stick and trip Jack off the board. Lariana stands to the head for Krutov. Rick wide for Timonev, left there. The red wave comes in again. Has a ton of booms one, 15 rows high. That's the end of the season for a minute period. to play in the period. What's happening to the Flyers, occasionally they're trying to come out of the zone three abreast, but when they're forechecked and the puck carrier takes his time coming out or circles back and the wings keep going up high, the wings already get to the Soviet blue line and by the time the puck carrier comes, they've got no speed, so the puck's got to be thrown in. They're not coming up three abreast. They're either going to have to start out deeper together or take the puck back and circle back and come together if they're going to put some pressure on the Soviet defense. Bob McCam and their coach has some between period work to do with the Philadelphia Flyers who trail 2-0. A delayed call now is made just outside the blue line. The faceoff will occur right there with 51 seconds to go. They're getting an initial pass up to the center iceman fairly well right inside the blue line. But he stopped and the other fellas are a little too far ahead. And he's not getting that puck up quick enough if he's going to have them going with some speed. Shot bouncing past Lindbergh into the Philadelphia corner. They want to feed Clark quickly on the break. Can't do so. Allison was turned back. Try it again, left side this time. Here's Carson, can't make the move around Kazatana. Kazatana passing to Tim in there. Bobby Clark keeping it in there in the corner as the Soviet player falls. Flyers looking for that pass out of nobody in front of the goal, however. Soviets come away with it now, 20 seconds to play. Timonev makes his play, backhand drive, good save by Lindbergh, still loose in there. Larry Anoff keeping it in for the Soviets. Close call for a potential third goal right there. It's picked up by Fedosov. The Soviets will have a face-off of the flyer zone with three seconds to play. They call this man the Soviet Bobby Orr, but I've got to be honest with you. I don't think he's anywhere close to Bobby Orr. He's an excellent defenseman. He plays extremely well. He's probably as fine a defenseman as there is in a game today. But there's not a defenseman in the game today that could do what Orr could do when he was healthy. Here's a good chance by the Soviets breaking down three on two. Timionev getting a good backhand shot away, but Cochran taking Lariana up right into the net so he couldn't get the rebound. It would be fair, Lunani, to say that by comparison, Bobby Orr, the best defenseman ever to play in North America, well, this man fed us off the best the Soviets have ever had, and I guess that much is a valid comparison. They play the three seconds out. The Soviets on goals by Vasiliev at 1249, and Krutov on a real scoring spree in the series at 1503. Have a 2-0 lead over a stunned crowd here at the Philadelphia Spectrum. 
as the Flyers get off the mark slowly in game six. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. By copyright and played under authority of the National Hockey League and the National Hockey League Players Association. Bobby Clark and Larianov at center ice. Referee Bruce Hood. Has them underway. Let's see now what moves the Flyers made of adjusted to between periods here. They want to implement in this second, being outplayed by a wide margin back in the first, Tim and Ev. Couldn't get around the defense there, and it's picked up by Ray Allison, shot back to center ice for the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers want to do something quickly, I would think, to reverse the trend of this game, which has been all Soviet Union so far. Clark snaps a quick pass out of center ice. Carlson left there at the blue line by Cochran. Petisov. Larianov offside was Krutov on the right wing. They face it off at the Flyers blue line. Well, the Flyers are going to have to work the puck down closer. And this man right there, Mark Howe, is one of the people capable of doing that. An excellent puck handler. They've got to get that puck down to the forwards close to the net because in that first period, even though the Flyers had eight shots down, four of them from the defensemen, and you know that you've got to get some opportunities on Trechuk if you're going to beat him, and they've got to be from close in. Daryl Sittler wins the faceoff from Anatoly Semenov. Pass back into the center for Paul Holmgren. It's relayed down behind the Soviet goal. Holmgren going in after it now. Sittler having difficulty, squeezing it out over the blue line finally. Shot back in, offside, called at the Soviet blue line. George Burns and Brooke Shields star an hilarious comedy of the heart, just you and me, kid. Motion picture fun for the entire family. Monday night next on CTV. Perbukin shooting at the length of the spectrum ice. Hoffmeyer picks it up. Icing called against the Soviets. Well, Hoffmeyer is playing with Philadelphia right now earlier this season in the waiver draft. He was picked up by Edmonton. He had a little problem with his back. Didn't play much. They waved him back. Philadelphia picked him back. As we look at Bob McCammon, the man that had Hoffmeyer and Mean. He likes him a great deal. Brad Marshall with an injury. McCammon has Hoffmeyer up here playing. And Bob McCammon doing one of the fine jobs, the real good job of coaching in the National League this season. Really has these Flyers disciplined. A fine hockey team. Off to a slow start tonight, however, from the point of shot. Good stop by Trechak. Carson let one go from back there. Soviets don't let it stay long in their zone, however. Perbukin at center ice. Shot from the angle. Stopped by goaltender Pelly Lindbergh. We didn't have much of a chance on either Soviet goal back in that first period. Hoffmeyer dug it ahead too far for Holmgren. So the Flyers now make some changes. Again, shot down the ice. Icing is waved off. Lindbergh there ahead of Sheffield. Flyers breaking much better from their own zone now, but still faltering when they reach the Soviet blue line, as you saw right there. Pop has it down behind the Soviet goal. Dukov, long pass out to center ice. Goes to Venikov. Relays it in for Vasiliev. He is one of the two Soviet goals tonight. Kutov has the other. Now the Flyers swing inside the line. The back one shot. Petschak kicks that away from Paul Evans. Evans into the corner. Passed it semi-blindly in between two Philadelphia Flyers. But the puck is still in the Soviet zone. But not now as Bykoff comes out with it. Gets around Wilson. Turning in the corner. Makes his play back to Starikov. A bouncing puck he controls. Packs it from there. Deflected by Wilson off to the corner. Now Ben Wilson got in the play up to Bill Barber. The booming slap shot by Goran. Blocked by Trechak and cleared back by the Philadelphia Flyers. Half a flyer stick down the ice and will go once again. Trechak rolling it around so icing is waved off. Had to get there first against the on-rushing flyer forward. Senesalo 
Getting some help from Paddock now as they bump it against the boards for a face-off about three and a half minutes into this period. And the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. There's a good chance right there from Paul Evans with Tom Gores going in for the rebound, but Trechak just steered it off to the corner. Soviets unable to clear at the blue line. Barnikov finally getting it out to center ice. He's gone Paddock now over on the far boards. Back to center it comes. While that commercial you saw was playing a moment or two ago, they were playing the theme from Rocky here at the Spectrum. That might be a mistake. The Soviets said it was a very inspirational movie for them. How did that a good scoring chance there? Unable to get very much on it with Sinisalo. And it comes back to the Philadelphia Flyers blue line for Cochran. But the Flyers much improved here in the second period. How rolls it in. Two Soviet defenders there to guard against that puck reaching Kretschak. Now over on the right side, Sportsaw, Sportsaw shooting, hit the goal post. Almost 3-0 right there as they allowed Sportsaw to sail right in. Offside call at the Soviet blue line. Well, Don, you're right. The Philadelphia Flyers are coming up as a unit more, and this man right there has looked off, just made a great play when Sportsoff had the chance. The pass was coming to him. As the defenseman Cochran moved up on him, he let it go through. He's one of the older fellows on the team, and by the way, one of the bigger ones. He let it go through. Sportsoff coming to the wide side. He got free, came off the right, took that shot, and just hit the pipe. So it remains 2-0 Soviets. We're getting close to the five-minute mark of this second period here at the Philadelphia Spectrum. It's going to be a tribune penalty on Bobby Clark. That'll be the Flyers' first penalty of this game. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Bobby Clark giving the Russians the first power play opportunity of the evening as he's get called for tripping right there in front of Bruce Hood, taking out the Russian defenseman. So Bobby Clark sitting out the penalty, the Russians having their first power play opportunity of the evening. Hood fairly lenient so far has called just one other. That was to Pervukin back in the first period for interference. 15 29 to play. The Soviet power play not overwhelmingly effective here in this series so far. Just five goals in 28 chances. Well, the Philadelphia Flyers have just called Kutov's stick for a measurement. And should that be bigger than the half inch? That's a good call by McGammon if it's bigger than a half inch. I'm sure they know it is. That would allow the Russians to get a penalty. Yeah, you can obviously see there that uh, this stick is illegal. And the uh, penalty's being called by Bruce Hood. That'll be two minutes for playing with an illegal stick. Lou Nolan down there in the penalty box giving us the information, the illegal stick call against the Soviet Union. Chef, the only thing wrong with calling the penalty at that time, had they been wrong, then the Flyers would have been assessed to delay a game and been five against three. A better time to call it would be if they had a man advantage if they're still behind, and then call it, and then they'd get up five to three. I agree, except you've seen those Soviet sticks. You saw them in the corridor in Minnesota. I think McCammon had a 100% chance of getting oh, the yeah, call. Right they there. are all way out of whack well, in terms of regulation. Especially this fella. He, yeah. he and Fedosov are the two worst. But they've been talking earlier about fixing them. Apparently, the Flyers had them checked before the game, and he's a little disturbed. But that's why rules are made. If you want to play, follow the rules. Another surprising thing tonight, as you see Kutov at the penalty box, is that Kapustin and Shalimov, two of their fine veteran forwards, very effective. I thought both of them in this series. Neither is in the lineup tonight. As the Soviets dress just 22. Well, uh, you have to remember that they're the older fellows, and uh, they do have a great deal of depth. The Flyers also missing Ron Flockhart, one of their outstanding forwards, and Tim Kirk. So a timely measurement as far as the flyers are concerned has the teams even here now a man short each as the shot is blasted by timonov wide of the short side taylor for the philadelphia flyers getting it around to hot fire the relay comes off the board by taylor into the center ice area 
On to Loriano stick. Now Fettis on. Hoarding danger against Howe in front of his own goal. Gets turned around by Howe. Has a ton off to Liriana. Ian Kutov, two of the most impressive Soviet forwards in this series. Viktor Timinev. Fedosov, the rushing defenseman to Liriana. Two on two, and they come over the blue into the corner. Puck bouncing loose in there. McCrimmon getting a three for the Philadelphia Flyers. Around to Howe. Less than a minute to go, 55 seconds in the two penalties, one each side. Hoffmeyer left it there for Fedosov of the USSR. Soviet, six minutes into the period, hold a 2 0 lead. Both goals in the first offside, the pass from Barber in the Daryl Sittler. You people might have seen Mark Hall up front as Lariana right now going to the bench. On that exchange, there's four and four in the ice, and Bob McGammon moves Mark Hall up front, which is a real good move. He does that because there's more ice surface available. Mark, the best skater on the team, along with Cinecello, and a great stick handler, and excellent shot, has a good opportunity to be dangerous. And anytime he gets in a four and four situation or a penalty kick situation, Hall's got that flexibility, and boy, he's dangerous. He has 12 goals as a defenseman for the Philadelphia Flyers. 30 seconds to go now on the two penalties. Ben Wilson for the Flyers. Drops it on the left side for Barber. The pass back into Wilson. Sittler inside the line, too. Sittler cruising out in front for a scoring chance. If Barber can get it to him, but he cannot. Guarded back there, and the Soviets come up with it. Shepilev, Brent wide. Wilson has to hurry against number 15, Svetlov. Svetlov jams in into the boards, taking over now. Dvorak for the Philadelphia Flyers. Time has expired on those two penalties. The team's back to full strength once again. Sittler shooting. Petrak down. Rebound still loose. Under Petrak. A whistle stops the play, but a close scoring chance right there for the Philadelphia Flyers. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. You'll see Daryl Sittler. He gets a good opportunity right here with a shot, and Clark and Barber both going for the rebound. Had opportunities, but Trechak just throws the puck. Fine opportunity for the Flyers, but Trechak makes the save and covers the rebound. Face off, Evans taking it for the Philadelphia Flyers against Bykov. Bykov digs it back into the corner for the Soviet Union. Starikov back to Bykov. They break so quickly. Bykov fanned on the shot into the flyer zone. Soviets will organize again. The pass too far for Vasiliev. Vasiliev digs into the corner. Kozhevenikov can't control the puck. Out to Starikov at center ice. Flyers had a good start to this period, but have not sustained the action. Although now have outshot the Soviets 13 to 11. There's 10 8 Soviets in the first period. Kozhevenikov. Taken down over on the far boards. There'll be another Philadelphia Flyer penalty. This one looks like elbowing. The Soviet NHL Series 83 will continue in just a moment. A free agent from Finland, Sinisalo, takes the penalty against Kozhevenikov. He tackled him right there. He really didn't have to do that, Don, because he was in a good enough position where Kozhevenikov wouldn't have been able to get to that puck before the other defenseman of Philadelphia was backing up the play. So here's the Soviet power play led by their top five out there. Petasov, Kazatanov back on the point. Timonev, Larianov, Kutov, the attackers. Kazatanov blasting the shot. Rebound, and oh, on the short side. That's staying wide with Lindbergh the other direction. Well, the Soviets reverting to the power play with two men down deep again and feeding that puck out to Kazatonov at the point. Kazatonov tries to get that puck in the middle to both people standing in front who will be screening and also trying to deflect the shot. The one shot goes wild and the second shot just to the side of the net. And until this series, we have not seen the Soviets shoot as much as they have from the point. Right there, right on Lindbergh to save off Kazatonov. Normally, they would do this. 
pass it around for as much as 90 seconds if need be. But no, a booming blast again going wide from Petisov. Those point man command was stuck down. Howe coming up with it. He'll backhand it, but not out. Petisov is forced out. Yes, the line's been called it offside. Well, this line, Larry Anoff, Krutov, Timionev, Fedosov, and Kazatonov, the leading scorers of the Russian team and also have the most shots on net. One of the reasons they're always playing the power play. And this fellow right here, Kazatonov, has probably as fine a shot as Fedosov, and they both like to boom him. You know, we've never seen the Soviets miss the net as much, but that's because we've never seen the Soviets shoot as much. Usually they would wait for better shots than they do now. They shoot from bad angles now and they try to shoot more often but they go for more deflections than they did before the soviets now have 21 goals in the series and this line you've talked about is accounted for half that total almost with 10. Betasov starting from the side Petchak. just over a minute left and the philadelphia flyers penalty to center silo for holding Now they take their time in the center ice zone as the Flyers come out to meet them. Kezatanov brings it inside. Kutov from the right boards can't get a pass away. Bounces high. Fox slamming away at it. To the blue line. Held in by Kezatanov. Roll down there. Held in by Fedosov. Lariana feeds it across to Kutov. Now Lariana. Kutov. They're everywhere. Kezatanov. Fedosov. Over well, to the other point. Drips it in for Lariana. Kutov back to Fedisov. Right beside the goal. A pretty play. And it's 3 nothing for the Soviet Union as they whip that puck around. Lariana stationed just beside the goal. 3 nothing Soviet. Well, that's the type of play the Soviets used to make. First of all, they move that puck so quickly, you hardly have a chance to set up. But watch the pass across to the off wing. That was their standard play rather than the shot from the blue line. Earlier in this series, and most of the times, right here, Fedosov's been shooting. Now he slides it across to Larianov on the open wing, coming up with a wide open angle at the net, and he scores the goal. The Soviets put on a classic display of almost no touch passing right there. They, the puck was hardly on their stick, and it was gone. So the unnecessary penalty by the Flyers, Sinicello really cost them that time as the Soviets get a power play goal. They make it 3 nothing. Shot going wide, rebound there. Shot also wide by Ray Allison. Bobby Clark tries to jam it out in front. Still has control behind the Soviet goal. Whips it out in front. The quick shot by Carlson. Now Bruce Hood will whistle down a penalty against the Soviet Union. So the Flyers will have a power play with a 3 nothing deficit to face. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Well, as Philadelphia is putting on a little pressure, you're looking at Val Tretiak right there, Vladislav Tretiak, who just got a slashing penalty. He was in front of the net, taking a slash right there to Philadelphia player. No doubt about it. Referee Bruce Hood right on it. Tretiak going with the first penalty. Varnikov's going to serve it. The Flyers are going on the power play. Tretiak apparently doesn't like to be bothered. You wrap that stick on the back of Carson, and Hood right there called the penalty for slashing against the Soviet goaltender Tretiak. Actually, Carson was taken into the net on Tretiak, and Tretiak a little disturbed. He was down, and he slashed, and it was a pretty wicked slash right there at Carson. And now the Flyers have the opportunity to get their first goal of the evening. Maybe not up to Smith standards in Long Island, but a uh, pretty good slash just the same from a goaltender. Daryl Sittler now, the Flyers with the power play advantage. Bobby Clark in the corner with it. Pushing and shoving in front of the goal. Holmgren getting turned around. How shooting, rebound there for Vukin. Got his stick on it and brought it out for the Soviet Union. But right off the bat, a good scoring chance for the Flyers who need to score desperately now, turning 3-0. That's because Holmgren screening in front. At the blue line. How with Clark. Zittler turning and almost rattled one in right there. Vidya Letnanov got his leg on it. Down the ice it comes, but a good-looking power play for the Philadelphia Flyers right now. Their most impressive of the night. 
just past the midway mark in the period, the midway mark in this final NHL Soviet hockey confrontation. Markov. Perbukin against him. And Perbukin wants to freeze it. Can't do so. Comes free for Holmgren. Out of the left point. Holmgren again down beside that goal as it hop over his stick. Soviet shoot to the line. Clark flags it down. Holmgren against Vinny Letmanov. They both overstate the puck left there. Out for Hoffmeyer. Back to the corner again. Sittler, Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer holding it there to Daryl Sittler. Clark. Clark and Sittler, veterans against the Soviet team. Sittler popping it near the front of the goal. Clark in behind. 15 seconds to go in the Soviet penalty. Flyers patiently form their playoff. Sittler waiting. Back to Clark. Out in front, loose puck. Sittler jams at it. It'll be held right there. Trechak complaining. Six seconds left in the penalty to Trechak being served by Varnikov. Well, he certainly was complaining because he hasn't seen anybody stand in that crease or in front of him as consistently and as well as Paul Holmgren just did. Holmgren fighting off two defense, but look at him in front. <laughs> he just sets up camp right there, not allowing Trechak to see the puck, and he wasn't about to be moved. If the Flyers could have worked the puck to the middle and got a shot through, it could have been dangerous. Trechak really being screened. No defenseman able to get Holmgren out of there. He was tough to move out of there. It looked like he was bolted to the ice. He just stood there at will in front of the Soviet goal. Holmgren does that very effectively. One of the best in the league at standing in front of that goal. 15 saves each way for Lindbergh and for Trechak now. Just six seconds to go in that penalty. Dubkov up the boards for Toja Venikov. Flyers trailed 3-0. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second period. Paddock over on the board. Into that Soviet corner. Work the other side. Set a silo. Leaving it in there. And Evans rolled it ahead. Was forced to play it back down to his own zone. Eight minutes to go in period two. Sinisalo, left wing pass. Wide angle shot, turned aside by Trechak. Flyers almost bringing it right out in front by Paddock, who couldn't control the puck, but he had a chance to wheel and shoot. Hot fire, Kozjevenko in the corner. Betasov now back at center ice. More checking by Tom Gorans for Philadelphia Flyers. Soviet swing it smartly inside the line. Shows Jovenikov to Bykov. Bykov leaving it behind the net. Now Hoffmeyer with it. Ahead to Sittler. Gorin shooting it down to the corner. Bill Barber going in after it. Pass right out in front. Sittler shoots. Great save by Kretschak from point blank range. Kretschak is down. He felt the force that blow, and he has been injured on the play, lying on his stomach. Well, Fedosov gave that puck up right to Sittler in the slot. Split Sittler blasts that puck. Fedosov. Well, the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. As we were going to say, Fedosov looking very human, giving this puck away blindly right into center slot area, and Sittler getting a real fine shot away. One that got up high, and Trechak knocked him down, and he was hurt. Back on his feet, staying in the game. Trechak stunned by that blast from Sittler. Here comes Timonev, his hard drive, handled by Lindbergh. Flyers coming away with a Bill Barber playing more than many expected him to tonight. First game since December the 4th, but they obviously feel they need the experience and skill of a player like Barber. It's called on the offside there at the Soviet line. You're right, Don. They said he was going to play two, three shifts. He's been playing a great deal, and as the game goes on, he's playing more and more. That's Tom Gorris right in front of him, who's got away with his helmet. He used to wear a helmet, not wearing it anymore. 
see Daryl Sittler coming off. Sittler, Barber, and Clark having the best chance so far this period for Philadelphia. And that, those three fellows among the best in the decade. Hockey players. What a great threesome. Indeed. Face off in the center ice area. Seminole passed it over to the Philadelphia player Holmgren. Now Wilson starting out at center ice. Hip rolls off his stick. Quickly the Soviets come back in. Svetlov knocked off balance inside the blue line by Dvorak. And it's shot down the ice by the Philadelphia Flyers. Icing will be the call here. Picked up by Vilya Leptinov. They'll face off in the flyer zone. This NHL Soviet Series 83 is a special presentation of CTV Sports in association with TV Labatt. This program is copyright and strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition of this telecast without the express written permission of the CTV Television Network and TV Labatt is strictly prohibited. They were just looking at Billy Itnoff, and he's called Alphabet because of all the words or letters in his name. So, play underway with 6.15 to play in the period. The Soviets have padded their lead now with a third goal. Here's a chance for a fourth. Shefalev got turned away right in front. Good play by Dvorak in there as the Soviets are all so dangerous when you give them half a chance. In on the goaltender. Dvorak having difficulty. Wilson helps him bat it back to the Philadelphia corner now. And again, the Flyers have to shoot it down the ice. This one will not go far enough to be called for icing. For Vukin, ahead to Barnikov. Barnikov hits the fire line, gets turned around smartly by Wilson. Flyers coming in. Can't make a play. Pop got turned around inside the blue line. The Soviets, Barnikov with him now. He feeds Vozikov. Vozikov drifted it on the short side wide. Davidoff containing it at the blue line. Now for Zlutkov, into the slot, picked up by the Flyers, and here they come. The backhand pass for Taylor never reached it. And Barnikov has it at center. Five minutes to play in the period. Barnikov drops the pass to Zlutkov. And for the Philadelphia Flyers, it is Ray Allison. Taylor at the point, rolls it in front. Allison against Bozakov, and they're going to try to freeze it there, cannot do so. Carson dug it loose, but it comes all the way out outside the Soviet blue line. Bobby Clark, Allison, shot blocked by Davidoff, quickly in front the pass, nobody home. Allison hits Clark with it behind the goal. Now the dangerous Vasiliev gave the puck up. Slap shot right on, set shot, rebound, and oh, Clark couldn't poke it in. Off a Soviet skate and down the ice it goes. Philadelphia putting on a great deal of pressure at that time, testing Trecek a couple times. Philadelphia playing with more poise, more flow to their game, and this man right here just never quits. Amazing youngster. And we call him youngster because he plays like a 20-year-old. He seems like he can play forever. Here was the good scoring opportunity right there. The puck coming right through a screen. Red Jack, the middle of the net, equal to it. The rebound just missed by Clark. That was Carson taking the shot, and Clark was right on the doorstep. The Labatt's Player of the Game Awards will be presented to the outstanding players on each team as selected by our telecast crew. They will each be receiving, as they have throughout the series, a Panasonic Way mini stereo cassette player. One thing Bobby Clark's got, he's got so much drive and desire. If you can ever find a way to just bottle it and sell it, you could have a great deal of fun <laughs> making money because that is, you're looking at Bob McGammon right there. That's one thing that you can't give a fella. He's got it. He just has the kind of ability to lead a hockey club and never quit. Indeed. You know, Canadians win tax free lotteries. But if you're an American, the story's different. This report and more in the first edition of W5 for 1983 on Sunday night. We've got something going on now at the bench. Bruce Hood skates over again. Another measurement. Let's go okay, to Lou Okay, here Dolan. we go again. Uh, stick measurement. Looks like a banana. Vasiliev stick. And here it comes. Referee Bruce Hood. Two-minute minor to Vasiliev. Playing with an illegal stick. 
<laughs> you know, I was talking with Tom Watt, the Winnipeg Jets coach who worked on our telecast. He would like to see the rules scrapped all together. How do you feel about it? Well, actually, uh, I think he's probably right. I don't know why you can't use a stick with a bigger hook, say, than a half an inch. The reason why they finally put the rule in, when you had a fellow like Bobby Hull shooting that puck with that big curve, it used to play tricks on the goaltender. They were afraid a goaltender was going to get hurt, but the goaltenders are really well protected right now, and you could probably put nearly as much spin with a half-inch curve as you could with an inch and a half. So if a fellow wants to use it, it takes away maybe from some of the other parts of the game, and right. it might be worthwhile to extend it to an inch or an inch and a half. However, the rule is in effect right now, and Vasiliev will indeed serve the Soviets' second minor penalty for an infraction of the curve on the stick. The stick also thrown out of play by Bruce Hood as he announced the penalty after the measurement. The Soviet sticks, most that I've seen and Lou Nanny have seen, are all that way. This could go on all night. Here's Howe. Blasting one wide. Oh, and Holmgren fanned on the rebound. Howe again. Score! Flyers on the board. Now it's 3-1. to one. Both Bobby Clark and Paul Holmgren screening down in front. In fact, there's a little confrontation right there after the goal was scored. But the bullet drive from Mark Howe. One of the best first shots in the game from the blue line. He just beat Trechak. Watch this man shoot a puck. He shoots rock right through the leg. You saw Holmgren and Clark in front. Had the front off getting a little upset after. Made a gesture to Clark and Holmgren got right in there. But the score from Howe puts Philadelphia on the board and the Soviets lead 3-1. to one. If you'll notice, it was a well-directed hard wrist shot. He snapped in there past Trechak. Well, and the American the flags are waving. The Soviets are going to run down to the dressing room after the period and try and take all those hooks out because they could be getting calls for the rest of the night. The rule is there in Olympic and international hockey, but apparently in Europe, it's kind of a gentleman's agreement. It is not done. But here in the National Hockey League, the Flyers twice tonight have enforced them to their advantage, certainly on this occasion. The power play goal makes it 3-1. And this crowd and the Philadelphia Flyers have both come alive. Three minutes and 39 seconds to play in the second period. Howe again inside the Soviet line, but it's called to the offside. The goal, Howe at 16.04. Dvorak getting the assist on the power play for Philadelphia. You know, he could shoot a puck like that when he was 16 years old. He came over and came to Minneapolis. The World Team tryouts were there at that time. He was 16. He made the team. He just come out there and sail across the blue line, flick his wrist, and it was incredible how that puck was fly. Lou Sittler also gets an assist on Howe's goal. Sittler and Dvorak from Howe. Was it the 1972 Olympics you broke in at 16? I believe it was. Yeah, and uh, if there's anything to heritage, you can remember how his father shot the same way. Yeah. It's a little flick of the wrist. Bill Barber now will take the face off against the Soviet Svetlov who moves in. A rejuvenated Philadelphia Flyer team here. But Svetlov got knocked down at center ice, heading for the Philadelphia blue line. It is Barber with it. Barber to Gorenz. Did you let that off? Shuts him off. The shot blasts wide. Hotfire failing to hold it in. Getting it across to McCrimmon. Or Sittler. Sittler into the corner against Pervukin. Runs him into the board. Shepelev hit by Barber from behind. Barber can't win it, though. High stick, bats the puck down. They allow it to go right off. Provukin's lost his helmet. Svetlov now. Trying to play it inside the Philadelphia line. Has no success. Didier Lepinov has to go back to his own zone. Two minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Here's Sheffield. Sheffield a good move, and then couldn't get all he wanted. And drifted it wide as Lindbergh hangs on. A good move, a great move. Shepelev making just a fine move at his, on his skates at full speed. Throws Hoffmeyer, slipped that puck right through. Just watch the kind of agility on skates he's got. Just a little touch of the puck right through the legs. And Hoffmeyer has got to pull him down because it was quite a move by Shepelev. He was trying to score himself, but the puck didn't go any bigger to be in the net. Maybe that had come. And he hit that puck, Lou, falling nose first out of the ice. One thing in mind, make contact, and he did. Just shot it wide. 
Victor Slutkov now on the faceoff against Holmgren, who goes down on the pile. Soviets keep it in. Wide, the shot from Bozakov out in front. Lindbergh down wide open net, and they make it a 4-1 to one hockey game. Lindbergh reaching for that puck after the shot came from the blue line. Barnikov just off to the side was able to backhand it past the outstretched hand of Lindbergh. Just a, that kind of goal really hurt because it was almost a meaningless play, a bad shot from the blue line off to the side. Watch it bounce. Chopped it free there, yeah. And it's all just a backhand shot by Varnikov as he's reaching for it. I think it was Babinoff that fired it from the blue line. No, it wasn't. That, but bad luck right here as the goalie slammed his yep. stick down. It popped it right out there for the Soviet player Mikhail Barnikov, who makes it a 4-1 to one hockey game. 17.30 is the time in the second period. So the Flyers have got some work to do now. 4-1 Flyers was the score of the infamous first meeting here on January 11, 1976, almost seven years ago. But the Flyers won that one. Dvorak. Passing it ahead at center ice. Long shot handled easily by Trecek. Holmgren swoops in on the puck now. Another shot on Trecek. A soft when he turns to the side. Soviets can score so quickly just when you think you've got some momentum going for yourself. There's the North Stars found out of Minnesota on Tuesday night. Took the first goal. But back a 2-2 tie and the Soviets sailed away on them. Here's Bobby Clark. Stick check smartly at the blue line. Vasiliev to Kozhevinikov. Kozhevinikov a series of great moves rolls it in front. Starikov hit the goal post. Blasting a slap shot on the right goal post. Just over a minute remaining here in the second period. Soviets four, Flyers one. Markov. In goes Allison. And Zubkov is there to block his scoring attempt. Goes Javenikov. Soviet player falling in front of the goal. Bobby Clark. Rolls it out to center ice with 40 seconds to play. Inside the blue line. Here's Putop shooting a high blast. Lindbergh handled that. Putop in behind. Ozhevanikov getting out in front. Rolling it there for Lariana. Through him. Benisov. Putop. And they fail to hold it there. Clark digs it out for the Flyers. The long shot by Allison is way up in among the spectators. 11 seconds remaining. Well, the Soviets with a couple of real good opportunities there, throwing the puck around. Bykov, especially at the blue line, making a fine play. But I'll tell you one man for the Philadelphia Flyers that's everywhere tonight is Bobby Clark. He's back deep helping out. He made a great play to Allison there. Allison wasn't expecting it. Just a touch pass, Allison would have had a good chance. And this man, Kozienkov, that went behind the net, made a fine pass out to Stereokov right there. What are you fine player he's going to be. Here are the Flyers now. A quick shot by Paddock is turned aside. Just three seconds to go in the period. It hops in among the spectators over the glass with two seconds remaining. Kozhevinikov, who missed a couple of games out there tonight, just dancing. Number 29 for the Soviets has been extremely dangerous all night long. Kozhevinikov and Zlutkov got the assist on Varnikov's fourth Soviet goal. And that came at 17.30. Well, Zlutkov got the draw back to Voskov. He took the shot. And that's when Varnikov was right in front. Bozikov, by the way, has played a very good game back on defense and extremely physical, using his body quite well. Puck is batted down, but the whistle of the siren sounds to end the second period here as the Philadelphia Flyers came to life ever so briefly when Howe blasted one through with a good wrist shot from just inside the blue line at 16.04. But then Varnikov. Came right back down at 17.30 to reinstate a three-goal Soviet lead, and indeed they do have that margin at 4-1. to Two periods complete here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. ...into that one. So he has been a man to be reckoned with here in this series. Fretchak, as have many of the Soviet players. Third period is underway. Petisov getting it ahead to Howe. At the blue line of the Philadelphia Flyers, Kazatanov booms one from outside the blue line, gloved by Pelly Lindbergh. Bobby Clark could not reach that pass out, coming from Glenn Cochran. 
Slides down for Fedosov. Flyers, an early icing call, 23 seconds in. Well, those are the kind of things that Philadelphia has to improve on. Bobby Clark was in a perfect position right there. The pass to him just wide. Had he got that, the Flyers were just looping up high. They'd had a three-on-two break, at least out of their own zone. They've got to be a little sharper. Philadelphia does coming out of the zone. Bob McGammon probably going to call another curved stick or two this period. Yeah, that came in handy for him. One resulted in a goal on the power play. Sittler won the faceoff. Carson trying to jam it up the boards, aided by Lawrence. They could not do so. Now they pop it free. Here's Daryl Sittler at center ice with Lawrence. The pass came back over the Soviet blue line. Now it's brought in by Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer tracks it there for Lawrence. Shooting and Fred Jack was ready for it. Brad McCrimmon over on the far side. Trying to apply some pressure now. The Flyers are, but the Soviets awfully tough to hold in there. Kazatanov can't reach a rolling puck in behind the goal. Sittler gets there first. Checked by Kazatanov. High shot by Barber was gloved down. Barber keeping it in. Barber can't get enough wood on it. Battling for possession going down. Now Paddock is taken down and Shekhalev comes away with it. The relay in for Svetlov. Dvorak watching him. About two minutes into the third period, still 4-1. Soviets, the Flyers now coming out. Soviet back checking very effective. It is shot into the Soviet zone. Petchek stopping the bear for Perbukin. Pass Svetlov. Dvorak shoots it in. It is whistled down there. They'll face off outside the Soviet blue line. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. And that is the time remaining in this series. 1757, the Soviets with a 4-1 to lead. Face-off just outside the Soviet blue line is shot in by Mark Howe, who has the only flyer goal tonight. Taylor against Starikov. The Soviet wins. Taylor gets it back. Taylor backhands a shot, a quick shot. Stopped by Kretchak. Now pop in the corner. Down to one knee he goes. Feeds it in behind. Starikov passing it around for Kozhevenikov. Vasilyev. Finally brings it out to the center ice area for the Soviet Union. Hits the flyer blue line and had it taken away from him by Cochran. Taylor. Right beside the goal. Stand out in front. Holmgren rolling it there and no one to help him pop it in. Sarikov gulps it down the ice. The Soviet Union will be called for icing here. Back goes Cochran to pick it up. Face off in the Soviet zone. Well, Philadelphia much more able to get the puck in the zone this period, and especially by firing it in. They've been putting the puck in, getting some pressure. As we look at Mark Taylor, a boy that learned his hockey at the University of North Dakota, was player of the year in the United States College, and then drafted by Philadelphia. But Philadelphia putting the pressure on, free net puck, and Trechak didn't even see Holmgren there. The puck just went across the goal mouth. He almost had a goal. Here's Mark Taylor fighting for it. Look at Trechak, the other oh, side. You see that? Way out of position. Boy, if it could have only come free in Holmgren's stick, he could have just banged it home right there. And it's obvious what the Flyers need is a quick score right now to get back into this game. Trailing by three, Bobby Clark. He's played his heart out again tonight. Wins that face off and fell. They jam away on the Soviet boards. But the Soviet Union now picking it up across the blue line to center right. Sports off. Long pass over for Barnikov, intercepted. Bobby Clark at center. Clark, right wing pass. Steered just wide by Tretjak. Clark rolling it in front, and down goes Tretjak to hang on. They'll stop it there with 16-29 remaining. Well, you saw Clark with perfect position behind the net get that puck free. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. See Bobby Clark behind getting position and getting that puck out front, trying to free it up. 
as Babinoff dives on him. Darryl Sittler will face Larianoff on the draw. Wins it, but nobody across there to collect it for the Philadelphia Flyers. Krutov's shot is blocked by Dvorak. Dvorak gets it away from Timonev. Barber. Gorin's chasing it in there against Fedishov. Turns him around, takes him down, but it slid down the ice for the Soviet. Barber bumping Krutov at center. Timonev pass to a flyer. Barber inside the line. Could not get the relay from Sippler. Now Bruce Hood whistles play down in the center ice area. Betchak was coming way out of his goal. Bill Barber, you see, just back from an injury suffered on the 4th of December. Back about two weeks ahead of schedule. He's been cleared to play at play he has tonight. When we talk about shooters in the game, and we were talking earlier about Mark Howe, this is the other fellow. He and Mark Howe and Brian Kropp, three of the best shooters in the NHL, all on the same team. A fabulous wrist shot, one of the all-time great scorers on the left side, and a complete hockey player. And like Bobby Clark, he too seems to go on forever. Bill Barber. Timonev coming down alone now, getting some support finally. A hard drive handled by Lindbergh, the big rebound for Krutov in front. Back to Kazatanov. That is stopped with a stick of Pele Lindbergh in goal for the Philadelphia Flyers. Kazatanov to Fedisov. Bad angle. Will take it down to the corner and leave it there. Passing it back for Kazatanov. Pops it across to the other point, man. It's offside. 4.35 into the period of the NHL Soviet Series 83. We'll continue in a moment. It's 4-1 to one here. Montreal leading the LA Kings 4-3 second period tonight. Toronto ahead of Washington 2-1 on the third. Vancouver ahead of Hartford 6-3 third period. And the regular National Hockey League play, but all eyes squarely focused on Philadelphia for this last matchup between the Soviets and the Philadelphia Flyers tonight. Soviets, oh, so hard to come back on when they get a, a lead like this, three goals. Have it inside that Philadelphia Flyer zone again. Cleared to the blue line. Not out. Jam away. Finally forced it at the blue line as they poked forward along the board. And the Soviet Shepelev kept it in while he fell. Shepelev down to the corner. Semenov in front. Shepelev brought it right out in front. Here's the shot. He scores. Number 31, Anatoly Semenov. 5-1 for the Soviet Union. Well, Svetlov shot the puck from the slot area. I believe it was deflected off a skate. It might have gone off Shepelov's skate. Watch the puck after it's centered out. Svetlov, number 15, will be in the slot area after this puck is cleared. A good move by Shepelov there. Center to Svetlov. Now the shot comes, and it looked like it, it could have even hit Lindbergh's skate, but a good move there by Shepelov, then centered back out. And Semenov centering it to Svetlov, and he puts it in. By number 31, Anatoly Semenov. Assist number 15, Sergei Svetlov. Along with number 21, Sergei Shepelev. Shepelev and Svetlov get the assist. Five Just past the five-minute mark. Here's Bykov's hard shot. That's stopped by Lindbergh. Soviets all over the Philadelphia Flyers. And a real shocker here at 5-1 to one tonight. McCrimmon now. We welcome the viewers on Sports Channel in New York City. You've just joined us for the remaining action here. A little under 15 minutes to go. The Soviets lead the Philadelphia Flyers 5-1. to one. Don Chevrier, Lou Nanny with you with the spectrum. In the corner is Vasiliev losing control. Bykov battling for it. Back to Mikhail Vasiliev. He can't make the play. Now Bykov. He's a Soviet goal tonight, as does Vasiliev. This line has played well. They get it back. Pass for Sarakov, intercepted and shot down the ice by Brian Trott. Past the six-minute mark of this, the third period. Soviet Union jumping off to a 2-0 first period lead. Outscored the Philadelphia Flyers 2-1 in the second. Semenov made it 5-1 here in the third. Yet the Flyers have outshot them by three. Barnikov brings it inside the flyer line. Wilson makes the check. Puts off in behind, lost possession. Carson couldn't find it at center ice. Play ragged and scrambly now in the center ice area. Time and time again, the comeback bids the Philadelphia Flyers have been thwarted at center or at the Soviet blue line as they move out to head them off. 
Wilson for the Philadelphia Flyers. Makes the play right in front of the goal, rolling it there, still bouncing. Carson had a chance. They couldn't capitalize. It's Luke Cobb. Trying to make his pass out in front. Rolls back to the point. Fine defenseman Fedisov couldn't contain it there for the Soviets, but picks it up now. 4-3 Edmonton winning. 3-2 Calgary winning. The other victories for the Soviets. 3-0 Quebec. 5-0 Montreal. 6-3 Minnesota. And ahead 5-1 here in the finale. They have now outscored the National Hockey League by more than 2-1 in the six-game series. 24 Soviet goals, 11 for the National Hockey League to this stage. Blocked by Barber. Barber with a chance. Shoots quickly. Fred Jack to save. How gloves it down. Holds it in for Barber. Bill Barber can't get his shot away against Timonev. Kazatanov makes the check. Yasislav Fedosov, the Soviet captain. Works it slowly ahead the left side now. Rutov going right through, finally got caught by Howe, couldn't get a shot away. Gorin throws it ahead. Right back to the Philadelphia corner it comes, time and time again. Soviets heading off, the Philadelphia Flyers. Checking well, both ends, here they come. Three-man break, Rutov rolls it in front, Gorin intercepts the Philadelphia. Dumps it across the Darrell Schiffer, it is offside. Soviet Blue Live. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Evans on the faceoff for the Philadelphia Flyers. And Asilo on his left. And Paddock on his right. Brad McCrimmon, the Flyer defenseman. Jams that down to the Soviet corner. Pass for Vukin stick. For Vukin coming up with it. Clears it right back out. Soviets will sit on this lead. Try to make a break, a fast one, and add to it. Otherwise, they're content with the five goals they have so far. But they can break so quickly and add to it. Like right here, moving in on goal was Svetlov. Almost made it 6-1. to one. Out in front, a booming shot over top of the goal by Semenov, who scored the fifth Soviet goal a few minutes ago. Bob Hoffmeyer, he can't clear. Shepelev keeps it in. Centering pass is blocked. Vidya Leptinov containing it at the blue line for the Soviet Union. Now it's rolled across the ice to the Philadelphia Flyers. Havoc lets it go from well outside the line off the chest of Petjak. Svetlov trying to make the fast-breaking pass, gets it out of center ice. Over the line they come, and it's only seven off the six check by McCrimmon. Pass rolling off the Philadelphia Flyers. Hoffmeyer stick. Soviets in complete command here, midway in this final period. Little over 10 minutes left, they lead 5-1. to one. Vasiliev works it inside the blue line for Baikov. Turned back for the Flyers. Kozhevenikov shot it in on the offside. They'll face off right there. The Flyer blue line, exactly 10 minutes to play in the period. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Ten minutes remaining. A four goal Soviet lead at five to one. Wilson. Taylor at center eyes. Wilson now off the near board. The relay by Fox did not click. Kozhevenikov sends the silly of away inside the line. Made the pass, not the shot. Turned back into the corner. Poked out by Philadelphia Flyers Holmgren. Starikov. Here's Baikov. Kozhevenikov accepts the right wing pass. Dumps it in front of the goal. And they almost tapped in goal number six. Nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining now. Flyers coming in. Taylor cutting in on goal. Jams away at it. Kretschek there to block it on the short side. Starikov to Baikov. He's bumped down. Sergei Starikov. Barnikov again, wearing Maltsev's number. The great Maltsev had to go home after breaking his finger after just one game. He broke it in a practice in Quebec City. 
but they certainly don't miss him. Soviet team has played beautifully on this North American tour. That is Dvorak on the boards for Philadelphia. Flyers again having trouble advancing that puck down the ice. Cochran, the defenseman, brings it down to the corner, rolls it out in front. And Babinoff is there. Cover up for the Soviet Union and sends Sportsoff inside the blue line. Sportsoff written off by Mark Howe. He is the Flyers' only goal tonight. And a 5-1 to one Soviet lead. They got rolling early with two in the first period. When you get in behind the Soviets early, it's awfully tough to come back as the Flyers have found out. Bobby Clark couldn't gather in the pass from Howe. Bozakov all the way around and down. Flyers will get a break now as they'll have a face-off in the Soviet zone on the icing call with 7.55 to go. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. One thing you've seen tonight and you've seen all through the series, Don, the Soviets just don't get caught in outman situations. They always have that one back checker coming back. If the defenseman pinch, you might even have two. But they're still playing that man high. They're not allowing the Flyers to come down and get him in any three-on-two, two-on-one situations. The Flyers are having a tough time getting away with any of that. Edisov promptly off the faceoff of the Soviet Union ahead to Timonev. He rolls it for the center ice area. But there are three red shirts there to pounce on it again. Over to Timonev. Timonev makes his cut of the shot. It's blocked by Pelly Lindbergh. Held in by Fedosov for a moment. Flyers now with a break on the right side. But again, the Soviet defender Kazatana closed off. Tom Gorin's coming in right out in front. They bat away at it. Fetchak is down. Barber there as six go high, pushing and shoving. Reaching over now for a punch to the left hand of one of the Soviet players. Sittler in the middle of the melee as well. As Tepper's player late in this third period. Well, Hoffmeyer and Timmy have getting a little upset in front there, but a good chance by the Flyers. The late man coming in for a shot as we look at Bob Hoffmeyer. That faceoff is now going to come out of the zone because the flyer defenseman moved in. There's really no reason to move in. Here's Gorens trying to cut for the net. He has a taunt off, keeping him on the outside. Larry and off, see him back check all the way back in deep with Barber. That's when Sittler centers the pass right here. Hoffmeyer getting the shot. And then Barber on the doorstep being stopped by Trechiak. And then the skirmish started. But that's what we were talking about. Larry and on, Larry Anoff coming all the way back with Barber, even though Fedosov had been caught up deep. I want to acknowledge in the waiting minutes of this series the excellent work of our producer Tom McKee, director Michael Lansbury, the other commentators we've worked with, and in particular my partner the last four games, Lou Nanny. I'll call you the Tony Quebec of hockey. You've done a great job up here. Thank you very much, Don. It's been my pleasure working with you. It all began nine days ago at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, and now 7.24 remain in this NHL Soviet Series here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Golfed in by Hoffmeyer. Barber makes a good play and rolls in behind the goal. Could not steer it in front. Now Svetlov for the Soviets. He'll try the left side, and Hoffmeyer missed him on a sailing check. Hoffmeyer coming away with a puck now in behind his own goal and up the icy head. Bill Barber, batted down for Shepelev. Soviets cruising for that fast break in center ice. Svetlov makes the check, gets the break there, beats the pass over, and Lindbergh makes the save. Ahead for Sinicello. Vilyuletinov for the Soviet Union. Chopped off a Soviet stick down the ice. It will not be far enough to be called for icing. Six and a half minutes left now. Dvorak squeezing it inside the blue line. Play very friendly at this stage. It's getting late. And in their hearts, the Flyers must know it's a bit late to mount a comeback of a four-goal proportion against the Soviet Union. Long drive by Zubkov, handled easily by Lindbergh. Evans in difficulty. Left inside the line for Blykoff. Buckley on the puck was John Paddock for the Philadelphia Flyers. Evans inside the line. He couldn't control it. 
Oja Benikov, he's dangerous. Closing in with a pass. Good stick check back there by Ben Wilson. Vasilia blasts one high. Knocked down in front for Wilson. Wilson, a good move against Vasilia. Beating Mark Howe on the right side. Howe, right in front of the goal. No one there. Holmes in with it now. But Taylor couldn't find him. Taylor against Starikov. Dumps it back to the corner for Holmgren. Bumped off the puck by Babinov. The damage to a faceoff. Pepper scored once again. There's a punch thrown by Holmgren. Babinov is angry, as you can see, on the previous confrontation. Well, Holmgren throwing left at Babinov. A little upset in there, and we're going to have penalties. A little roughing going on in there. Holmgren taking him out with a check. Getting hit back and getting somewhat upset. We Ruffle see Rook. That's right. He's just letting them know who's getting the penalties and they're getting Paul Escort over to the box also. You see the little skirmish right there as Babinoff takes him in and then they're going at it. Paul's going to throw a left at him, I think, in about one second here. Right there. Babinoff looked like a good boxer. He just got his head back just in time. Paul very upset. Flyers, of course, uh, right now know there's only 508 left. Down 5-1, trying to get that puck free in the corner, and sometimes frustrations do run a little high. Well, it's surfacing only now. Babinoff and Holmgren getting roughing penalties together. They have contained themselves very well. Penalties have not been the Philadelphia Flyers' problem tonight by any means. No, Philadelphia playing. Philadelphia this year showing a great deal of discipline, and that's all because of Bob McCammon. He just won't let him take stupid penalties. They've gone from being first in the league continually. I believe right now at this stage they're 15th in the penalized teams in the league. And that's one of the reasons for their success. They used to give up so many shorthanded goals. That takes you out of the game. But this man right there won't stand for it. Has not allowed them to lose their discipline. They are flying high on the National Hockey League's Patrick Division. But they've been grounded by the Soviet Union tonight. With five minutes and five seconds to play in the hockey game and in the series. McCrimmon makes the pass ahead of center ice for Taylor. Taylor again now. Two Soviet defenders. Fedosov is the one who turned him back. Time and time again, the Flyers go into reverse gear. McCrimmon across the prop. Now they head out looking for the head man up there. Taylor decided to carry the puck in instead and shoot it down to the Soviet corner. Prop goes in for it. Bad pass. Nowhere near McCrimmon. Head over for Kazatonov, and he did not make a good play. Back for Krutov, intercepted by the Flyers. Hoffmeyer. Flyers now changing with a play at center ice. Larianov, he's been everywhere. One of the top Soviet players tonight. On a line that has led the series in scoring. The Soviet team. Edisov. They're out there for a skate right now, Lou. That's right. They're just killing the clock. One thing they're doing really effectively is taking the center ice away from the Flyers and just continually forcing them to come up the side to the defenseman. Ben Wilson. He's been effective for the Flyers tonight as well. Starts this play. He's right there. That's what they want to do all night long. They take that middle away and just force you to the outside if they can. Mark Howe has the only Flyer goal that came in the second period gave Philadelphia momentary life for the Soviets have just overpowered them preventing any chance of a comeback we get down to two minutes and 20 seconds of playing time Sheffield left it there for Wilson this night began with emotion and excitement and drama and the waving of 15,000 American flags. There's a shot right on Petjak. He makes the save, but I'll tell you, the Soviets took away all the enthusiasm, and here we go again. Fedosov, the Soviet captain involved there, Daryl Sittler and Bill Barber. Well, Billy doesn't usually get involved in this way. Billy's a complete hockey player. He plays his game extremely cleanly. Probably just getting a little frustrated here, but you have to look at the Soviet defenseman. He's going to wrap right up after... Barber's just going for the net. You see that? Fedosov just grabs him. The whistle had already blown. You can't blame Billy for getting a little upset right there. But the faceoff again coming out, and that's one thing you don't want to do. There really was going to be nothing happening there, so just allow it to stay. 
The defenseman should have stayed out at the blue line. The Soviets, of course, uh, very content right now to just pass the puck around, not give Philadelphia any kind of play or opportunity to score in Tretiak. 31 shots on Tretiak, and he has blocked 30 of them tonight. Tretiak just an outstanding goaltender for over a decade now for this Soviet hockey club. And the big question is he says he's going to quit playing after the next Olympics. Who will be the next Soviet goaltender? If you go back to the past 20 years, they've only had three. And it seems they have a great difficulty coming up with a second goaltender. And well, they have different reasons for that, Don, but I'm not sure what it is. They have Bushkin. We are told that he will not inherit the job that they have a young fella coming up in behind that they think will be their Olympic goalie of the future. They have corrected the time now. It skipped a minute. It is now 2.58 remaining, not a minute and 58 seconds, as we had seen earlier. Soviets getting that clarified with referee Bruce Hood. The Soviets probably want to get out of here quickly, and they're wondering what happened. Uh, we've got Shepelov has gone over to the penalty box to talk to the interpreter, Aggie Kuklowitz, and uh, Krutov, but... We see right there Daryl Sittler just waiting for them to come and face off. Bruce Hood talking to Aggie. And there's Larianov also with Fedosov. Let's bring in Lou Nolan now down there at the timekeeper's bench. Well, what happened? Uh, the players, we do not work with Glasser in Philadelphia. You prefer to work without it through the communications with the officials. And uh, players were checked at the red line. And um, one of the players hit us hit the single minute with his glove and uh, knocked one minute from the clock. <laughs> the officials had their watches on it and the, both officials came up right away and said that we owe the clock one minute. So the clock here is indeed vulnerable and uh, was victimized for a minute just there. They've corrected that situation now. This is the line's been excellent for the Soviets. I'm going to vote for Larry Anoff because he's been superb in every game. Their second leading scorer and goal scorer. But this line has had superb play all night long. And he, any one of these fellows could have been the Soviet star. Kutov has been the Labatt's player of the game. Kutov or Larry Anoff? Kutov has Kutov? been. Oh, before. Yeah, yeah yes. twice before. Previously, twice. All right, here's Sipper now with about two and a half minutes to play. Beating Gorin. Ridden off and got a shot away. Steered aside easily by Tretchak. Zittler popping it out for Barber, turning to slap it. Well, not Wilson stick. The relay failed by Zittler. Errol Zittler having a good season. His first full season with the Philadelphia Flyers. After getting out of Toronto. Soviet closing in again right in front of the goal. Svetlov cut. Did not make a play. Soviets will be going back to Montreal for the weekend. They will practice there at the Montreal Forum on Saturday and Sunday. We're told their flight to Moscow is not until Monday out of Montreal's Mirabel Airport. That's 31 Semenov that just went off, Don. He was with the Soviet junior team last year, their best player. Cannon, of course, beat him for the gold medal, but uh, he's made a great transition to this hockey club. A big step for him, and he's made it very effectively. Darikov ahead to Baikov. Baikov, Kozhevenikov. And that is whistled down as the play crossed the Flyers' blue line. Something interesting on the weekend. They've got a one of those promotions in Montreal when youngsters can come and watch the Montreal Canadiens practice. The Soviets are supposed to practice right afterward. There's a bonus for the kids to see both the Soviets and the Canadiens practice. I wonder if they get talking and say, well, seeing as how we're out here, can we have a little game? Well, I know one thing. I, the first time I played in Russia was 1965, and we went out to practice one day. We couldn't practice unless we played an Army team that happened to be there. You just never were able to get the ice without playing one of their teams. Well, they might have a scrimmage in Montreal. <laughs> Who knows? Could be an unofficial seventh game. Canadians, of course, beaten 5 nothing in the one shot they had against the Soviets New Year's Eve. Well, the team playing Montreal that night would love them to scrimmage the Russians in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holmgren now against Starikov. Starikov wins that little battle. Kozhevenikov beating it wide left side. Center ice for the Soviet Union. Baikov takes the pass from Barnikov. A minute to play in the hockey game and in the NHL Soviet Series. 5-1. The Soviets have it all wrapped up here in the Philadelphia Spectrum tonight. The Flyers who had that winning streak around the National Hockey League seven games it'll still go in the NHL they've been cooled out but good here by the Soviet Union Toronto has beaten Washington three to one tonight and Vancouver's beaten Hartford six four in the NHL 
Just 29 seconds to go, and a hard shot drifts wide from Mark Howe. He is the only Philadelphia goal. Bobby Clark played so well for the Flyers, been frustrated as any of them have been. Passes in now, and a quick shot from the stick of Carson is held on to by Trechak with 13 seconds remaining. That's right. Bobby Clark noticeable on both ends of the rink. He's back there helping the defenseman all night long, up providing some trouble for this fellow, Trechak, screening him on that one goal, played a great game. I want to thank our statistician, Eddie Milliken from Toronto, who's worked the entire six games, crisscrossed a couple of countries and the continent a few times. Thanks for your work, Ed. We get down to the final 13 seconds now. Uh, thanks to all the technical crews, production crews that have joined us in the six National Hockey League cities to make this series a success. Prism is the producing company here in Philadelphia, providing facilities for us. They do the Philadelphia Flyers games regularly. We thank them. Face off, comes out over the blue line, and that could just about be it as the clock here at the Philadelphia Spectrum ticks down. Now to five seconds. Cochran. Rolls it inside the blue line. And the National Hockey League Soviet Series 83 is over with the Soviet Union's national team winning tonight 5-1. to one. Another great game by Trechak and winning the series over the National Hockey League four games to two. And perhaps the NHL next time, Lou, might consider playing all the games in the province of Alberta. That's where the two wins came. Well, there's a little bit of difference, uh, as you know, uh, because this team is their select team. But it was a great experience for all the clubs. Uh, I know for our own team, the Minnesota North Stars, we were very pleased to have the opportunity to play, and we felt that uh, we gave a good effort six minutes in our game. As you know, you can't leave six minutes out of a game, but that was a big, big uh, difference for us, and uh, we're hopeful that we gained some, something from it. But the most important thing, we think it was an excellent exhibition.